The content of this podcast is provided for general informational purposes only and is not intended as, nor should it be considered a substitute for professional medical advice. Sweaty and pissed, sweaty and pissed, menopause makes me sweaty and pissed. Hello, everybody. This is Liam Morgan with Sweaty and Pissed, Menopause and More. I'm a comedian and a nut. (laughs) This is... Uh, with me, my Karen Nickel, brilliant nurse practitioner. Hello, welcome. Hello. And who else do we have with us today? The lovely. We, we have my baby child back again, Tess Morgan. Uh-huh. Hello, Tessie. Yes. Hello. The lovely and talented Tess Morgan. Thank you, my liege. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to have you back. It's and, nice to be back. And what are we talking about today, Tess? All right. Today we're finishing up the face. We're oh, finally goody. at the finish line. We're talking about eyes, eyebrows, and lips. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so this is our fourth video mm-hmm. and podcast episode that will, I guess, uh, finish up your series. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'll Thank sure, you for make, doing it. Of make sure to listen to uh, one, two, and three. We have great information on those podcasts. So if you haven't heard those yet, make sure to download them and listen and get great tips from the talented Tess Morgan. So thank you. Yeah. Like just to, so that people know that haven't listened before Uh she talked about skincare and preparing your face to put on makeup. And then the second one you talked about your foundation Foundation concealer. concealer. And then the third one was blush, bronzer and powder. And then now eyes, eyeshadow, mascara, eyeliner, eyebrows, and then lips. Okay. We're finishing it up. Yay. I'm okay. so excited. <coughs> yes. So excited. All right. Yes. So we're going to start with eyes. Is that right? Yes. We're going to start with eyes. Pretty. So now at this point in your makeup routine, you've done all the, the base work, and now we're going to start getting fun. We're going to start adding in color, adding in dimension into the face, bringing out the pretty eyes, the eyebrows, which I call the the drapes of the face and of the eye. So they're very important. I think a lot of people don't fill in their eyebrows lately, and we need to do that. <laughs> Y'all, we need to do that. You don't want to lose your brows. Well, they're, yeah, they're Lord, even, I've had to. They're even more important since we have the bottom half of our face covered all the time with a mask. Too. Yeah, so now it's very focused <laughs> on the eyes. You want to make those pop. Yeah. Um, so I like to usually start with the eyebrows before the eyes because it shapes your face and you can kind of decide how heavy you want to go with your eyes. Um, cause I even like it if you're in a big rush, I prefer doing brows over eyes and then just throwing on mascara and a little liner. If you have time to do liner, if not mascara and brows, and I feel like you look way more put together than if you were to skip the brows and do a bunch of eyes. Oh yes. So I like to start with the, the brows I always tell people your brows go with the color that you see obviously on your brows, but they should be mostly matching the root color of your hair. So like if you're somebody that gets highlights and stuff like that, if they're grown out a little bit, look at your root color. Cause oh. if you go with your highlights, you're going to look like an alien. Oh, murder. <laughs> we don't, I, want that. we don't want that. I always recommend like if you're in between colors or like thinking if you should go a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, I would say go a little bit darker because it defines the face a little bit more. So obviously go with your, your eye color. And then a lot of people, most people have like a brown eyebrow or closest to a brown. Make sure you're not going too warm and make sure you're not going too cool. Cause then you can start messing up some things. So just look at your eyes, look at your, look at your hair and match your hair is the easiest way to do it. Um, and I'll be able to show this in the video a little bit better on how to get the perfect brow shape. It's all about, measuring it to your face shape because you don't want a too big of a brow if you have a smaller head and a smaller face and if you have a bigger one you kind of want to bring it out a little bit more so you can kind of get proportions down um so i can show that probably better in the video than i can probably like verbally explain it um but the basics idea of it is fill in the sparseness and give yourself some shape bring your tails down a little bit give yourself an arch feather it in make sure your brows are nice and, and groomed that's the easiest thing to do. If, if your brows aren't groomed, you're going to have a really hard time finding your brow shape and your natural brow shape. And okay. Your hands. And, you know, me and my cousins, we plucked our eyebrows yeah. when we were little and looked like 
you know, nut jobs. So you, do you recommend going to someone and letting them shape your brows? Yes. If, in a beauty shop, I guess, right? Yes, in a place that in a, I always recommend, I know a lot of people go to like nail, nail salons and if you trust them, great. If you've never gone to them before for your eyebrows or any kind of waxing, I would like recommend that you go to a spa or a salon or a salon over a somewhere that doesn't specialize in cosmetics like that um because they usually can help pick out a shape better like Aveda salons are really great they always do really good brows um and things like that so fun tip also if you're just somebody that doesn't like to do your brows you can also tint them go to your salon and whoever's coloring your hair ask them to tint them oh and that fills out a brow and makes it really easy too and it also defines your brow shape, so it's a little bit easier to find as well. Okay. Are there brow products that you recommend? Yes. So there's brow powders and there's brow pencils are my favorite. There are like gels and pomades. I don't recommend them. I think you can get too harsh of a brow and they're too hard to control. Yeah. And then you'll look like my Aunt Lois. God yes. love her. God rest her soul. Um, and then products to use them for your at home. Um, I like powders and I like pencils. I don't like pomades. I think you can get like, they call it Sharpie brows and they just look so thick and so dense and pigment. And so I like a pencil or a powder. Um, my favorite powders are the Benefit Brow. I think it's called like Papau uh, Dur. And it's really great. It's really easy to use. And you can use the spoolie end that comes on most brow brushes and just really blend it in. That little thing looks like a mas mascara one. Um, and then brow pencils, I really like the Brow Gal um, is a really good pencil and they have really good colors that match most people. Um, Cover Girl has a really great one. Maybelline has a really good one. Um, Elf is super cheap and has a good one. And they have a really good brow gel, like a tinted gel. That's really good for if you already have full brows, but just want to define them a little bit more. They have a nice brow gel. But brows you don't have to get fancy with. You just got to fill in the sparseness, shape your face up a little bit. When you're looking at it, you'll be able to see like, that's too much. That's too little. And then you can even them out. Again, they're sisters, not twins. And then once you get your eye brows done, you've shaped your eye. And then you can go into eyeshadows, eyeliners, and mascara. Eyeshadows, for the more mature lady, um, a lot of people are told not to use shimmers. I use shimmers. On people, even if they're considered mature uh, skin, I like it. I don't think it's good for an everyday. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, if you want to, let your freak flag fly, by all means. <laughs> you know, put a, put a glitter on if that's what you really want to do. Um, but I love a glitter for, or a, not a really a glitter, more of a shimmer for an, a, a special occasion, a night out on the town. Um, especially with these masks on, a little shimmer. <laughs> Makes you look nice and, and wide-eyed and bright. Um, but I love to have an eyeshadow palette that has everything you need to be able to go from a day look to a work look to a night look. And there are several ones. Milani is a great drugstore uh, brand that has palettes that are don't have a crazy amount of colors, are not gonna overwhelm you. You can pick it based on your eye color. You know, if you got green eyes, I love a plum. If you got brown eyes, I love really warm tones and golds. Uh, green eyes can use a lot of browns and golds um, as well as purples. Blues can use anything. Browns can use anything. But go with something that you think would complement your eyes. Um, but I love quads and little palettes that you can transition to. It makes it easy. You have one eyeshadow palette. You don't have a thousand that you're trying to use up. They're all going to expire if you don't. <laughs> and we all have, we all have the, I have a thousand palettes that are probably expired, probably going to give me pink eye, but I'm still using them. <laughs> By darn it, I pay 50 bucks for it. I'm going to use it. I don't care if it gives me glaucoma. I do not care. Oh, murder. A cataract. No. Um, we don't want that. Um, but so Milani is a drugstore option that I really like. I think they're really pigmented, but they blend really easily. So if you're not used to putting shadows on, you're not going to be overwhelmed with the pigment and be like, oh, good Lord, I just gave myself a black eye. Mm. Um, and then higher end ones, Charlotte Tilbury, you cannot go wrong with. You can't go wrong with anything in that brand, but they have really great ones where they have big eyeshadow palettes. If you're somebody that likes to mess with a little bit more color, but they also have these quads that are just four colors, a lid color. That's a lighter color. That's really bright. That will really open your eyes up. 
something a little bit deeper to put in your crease, mm -hmm. and then a really deep shade to put on the outside to really define. And you can also use it as an eyeliner. You can just use a really thin brush. And then some of them have a little bit of that shimmery sheen that you can run over the lid to transition it into a night look. So I really like those because you can use one, two, three, or four colors, but you can go from a day to a work to a night look. So those are really great. If you're wanting to spend a pretty penny or if you're wanting to get a gift for somebody for the holidays coming up for eyeshadow palettes, Natasha Denona So at Sephora. Some of the best eyeshadows I've ever used. They're expensive. They're like, you're pushing $100 plus per palette. Pretty penny. <laughs> Worth it. Oh, they're beautiful. They they're are beautiful. beautiful. They also have individuals, cream shadows, and like mini palettes were really good for like if you have a daughter that's like just getting into makeup or um, somebody going off. There's somebody that's in college that wants, wants to be able to put a little something on but doesn't want a huge palette in their dorm room. They have really like small ones that are really nice. Um, but that brings me into cream shadows. Mm. I love a cream shadow. I think if you're somebody that is really on a rush, you do not give a flying rip about <laughs> your eyes. <laughs> Or you just, you just are, you do not want the fuss and the muss in the mornings. A cream shadow. So many places have, Revlon has some that are really good. You can also get high-end ones. I think cream shadows are like, you can, you can, those are the ones you can kind of sneak away with going at a cheaper option. And then Jillian Dempsey, who we've talked about on here before with the skin prep. She's got a huge line of cream shadows, lots of colors. You can find anything you want. Um, and you can also use those as like cheat colors or bron like liquid bronzers and things like that. Um, but hers are really great. And I just love to throw in an eyeshadow primer, throw a cream shadow on, and you can go out the door and you're good to go with a little mascara. And you look like you put in effort, but it only took you two minutes. Okay, to explain to everybody about an eyeshadow primer. Why would they need that? Okay, so... When you get older and you start to, your skin gets a little bit looser, it tends to get pretty loose around the eyelid. Mm -hmm. um, and you start to get some folds and some wrinkles and things like that. And then your shadow starts to crease up. Um, so I like an eyeshadow primer because it gives a really good base. It makes your eyeshadows go on smoother, more pigmented, and it keeps them on all day. And it keeps them from, from, cre from creeping creasing. In. From okay. like, yeah, so it gives a barrier. So it doesn't fall in right. to those lines. And this is um, different than uh, the primers we talked about for the face. This yes. is specifically for the eyelid. Specifically for the eyelid. Got it. Yes. And you can also, you can, you can interchange an eyelid primer and uh, put it on your lips. And you can prep your lips if you have a tendency to have your lip line bleed a little bit. Um, if you have started to get some of those um, little vertical lines around your lips. If you put an eyeshadow primer, it keeps that from bleeding out. Hmm. And it'll keep your lip line on longer. Clever. As well. Yes, so that's a good little tip. Yes. What eyeshadow primer do you like? Uh, Tried and True for me is an Urban Decay primer potion because they have the regular one. They have an anti-aging one. Oh. That helps tighten up your <laughs> eyelid. Why haven't you told me about this one? I have told you about it. It's upstairs in your makeup bag. <laughs> I don't understand. I know you don't. <laughs> um, but they don't help. And then they have a couple of tinted ones. So if you wanted just put a nice shadow primer, it's got a little shimmer in it. You can throw that on and then a little bit of shadow, like a deeper brown or something, and then rock out the door. Uh, oh, good tip. Yes. yes. So Leanne, can we talk about Green Chef now? <gasps> I'm telling you, I love it. Okay. We, okay. Uh, you know what is so wonderful about Green Chef? What? I like to cook and I've mm -hmm. cooked all my life and I've watched my mama cook. Mm -hmm. My sister hates it. And, <laughs> you know, as we take care of my little mom and daddy, they, we have a caregiver that comes three days a week. And I said, this little girl is 24 and she's darling, but she doesn't cook. And they really need help with meals. And I said to her, I go, I'm going to order you these Green Chef meals to come twice a week, mm -hmm. just twice a week at first. So, and I said, they take less than 30 minutes. If you can read, you can cook. They've got everything for you. They've got the directions. They've got everything in little packets that are ready to roll. It's fresh. 
It's they've got wonderful organic ingredients in them. You can get vegan, vegetarian, paleo, keto. Mm-hmm. And um, I loved the, um, I got the, um, I don't know, but the balanced meals for my family. family. Yeah, I think, yeah, oh, I got family meals. Yeah. Wonderful. I had mm-hmm. feta burgers to die for. Very flavorful. Everything has got a lot of flavor. You know, it's funny. You get, you cook something with fresh ingredients <laughs> instead of something packaged, and it is a game changer. It you know, is you feel indeed. like you're a chef. You are. But and I thought if if they could just if she could just cook those meals, they are so easy. Even if the people out here do not want to cook, I'm telling you, you can do it, and it is takes no time, and it is fabulous. It is. And Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company, and as you said, it comes in vegan, vegetarian, paleo, and keto plans. And you know there are tons of people who are doing a keto diet right now, so it makes it simple for you. I did the vegan this last week and, um, and you can change up your plan. That's another mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I did the vegan last week and they're delicious recipes. Delicious. I, I'm so fresh, high quality, clean ingredients. You know, you can really. Comes feel- to your front door. <laughs> Comes exactly. to your front door. Yeah. Oh, and, and I've, I've used other food services like this in the past and um you know there are three meals all the ingredients are thrown into a box and you have to sort out what goes with Mm -hmm. what recipe Mm -hmm. these come in separate every meal is in a separate bag everything's recyclable Uh which i love i love Love that and um i mean it's just so easy it It'd is. be crazy not to do it. And, and you know, I've said to my sister, I go, I'm telling you, you need to do this because it's all healthier. You know, there's organic gr- ingredients. It's yeah. all laid out there for you. It's in individual packets. You know, I, yeah. I'm just, I am sold. I yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah. So our listeners, you need to go to greenchef.com slash sweaty 80, sweaty 80. And use code SWEATY80 to get $80 off (laughs) across four boxes, including free shipping on your first box. 80 bucks off. I know. Y'all got to try it. It really is a game changer. And it's things that you would never think to cook for yourself. You know, (laughs) I mean, you do. You feel like you think, who am I, Wolfgang Puck? (laughs) Yeah, so you you need to go to greenchef.com slash sweaty 80 and remember to use code sweaty 80 to get 80 dollars off across four boxes four boxes including free shipping on your first box so it's an offer you can't turn down right i I mean i know it's wonderful it really is high quality food 80 dollars off free shipping on your first box yeah and you can decide how many you know how many times a week you'd want to get Mm -hmm. it Mm-hmm. I'm telling love you, it. I loved it, loved love it, it, loved it, loved it. I know I want to try the vegetarian hmm. and I, I need to get back on paleo so that I can fit my britches during the, <laughs> during the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and then that leads us into eyeliner and mascara. So I've gotten a lot of DMs. Um, from people watching the other videos and the other podcasts asking about lips and things like that, um, or eyes, I mean. And people have a problem with mascara and eyeliner smudging down Mm -hmm. and making you look like a raccoon by the end of the day. Eyeshadow primer, run it along your lash line and blend it in and let it set for a second, and it should keep things from slipping and sliding around getting into the bottom part of your under eye. So you run it along the lower eyelash line. Yes. So I would just take it. I think the Mm -hmm. primer potion has like a little wand that comes with it that you can run it or just take your finger or a brush, Mm -hmm. um, run it right along Mm -hmm. the under eye or the lower lash line and you should be fine. Good. Um, And then eyeliners. I don't like liquid eyeliners for the most part. I think they're good if you're doing something super glamorous and you're trying to hide like a fake lash band or something like that, but I don't think they look good on most people. I think sometimes they're too intense. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I really like a pencil as my preference. Um, Jillian Dempsey has some of the best ones I've ever used on the market. I think they glide really well. They stay in place, but they don't tug at your eye, especially when you have a little bit of a looser eyelid and you tug, you get skips in your eyeliner and then you have to go back over and it gets too thick. So I really like Jillian Dempsey's A Cosmetic No Tug Liner is I know a, one of my mom's favorites. Yeah. Lands. Yeah, I love Jillian Dempsey and uh, No Tug. And I think I got you yeah, for a present, No from, Tug. From, that's from It, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that one's really good. And then um, Drugstore Eyeliners that are really good. Elf has a really good pencil. L'Oreal, Maybelline, those are kind of like the main drugstores that you can really kind of see, get any kind of look like I make it like makeup piece and they're really good drugstore options. They usually are priced really well. You can, those are the times you can kind of get with fun with colors of eyeliners and cause they're not super expensive. Um, but they are really, they're really good. They do the job. Um, and then mascara is what mascara is the thing for me is I don't understand buying really expensive mascara. I think that's a waste of money because one, you should be switching out your mascara every three to six months Mm -hmm. or else you're going to like rip your own eyelashes out and you're going to get an infection. Yeah. You, you, I, I switch mine out every three months. You can go up to six months, but I get weird about my eyes because I have really sensitive eyes. So if you have really sensitive eyes and you're noticing your eyes get red, you get itchy. It might be your mascara. Um, but I always love a drugstore mascara. I think they're really good. I think they do the job. I love the L'Oreal Voluminous because they have the coal black, like the really, really black black. They have a brown one if you're someone that likes to go really natural. They also have a really good primer, lash primer, which I don't use all the time. But if you're somebody that doesn't have a lot of lash and really likes to try to get the most bang for your buck, you might want to try an eyelash primer. The L'Oreal Lash Paradise is a really good dupe. There's the word dupe again. <laughs> Real good dupe for the Better Than Sex Mascara by Too Faced, which has always been like a cult favorite. Mm-hmm. I think it's too chunky. That's my personal opinion. But that one I actually do really like. Essence. I think it's sold at all drugstores. I know it's sold at CVS and I think Walmart, but I think it's sold at all of them. That one is super inexpensive and they have some really great mascaras. They have like five or six different kinds. All of them are great. Oh, those are really good too. Um, But mascaras, I think that's a personal preference thing. So that's ones where you try out several, see what works best for your lashes. If you want length, if you want thickness, if you want both, you might have to layer up some mascaras, which is always a good thing. Fun tip for Tess. If you put too much mascara on and you get really chunky, take an empty spoolie which is looks like the mascara one, but take an empty one. You can get them in a pack at CVS. They're like a dollar for like 50. And you take a little of your um, moisturizer, run it through your spoolies and run it through your lashes and it will separate them out and make them look really fanned out and really pretty. Oh. oh. So that's a fun one. Cause I know some people, it gets like really clumpy when they start to layer up and starts to flake. So that's a good way to hydrate it up again and brush through them. Perfect. And then now I think we're going to lips, which I've gotten a lot of questions about. A lot really? of questions about. I've gotten so many because people, I guess, have don't really know. It was kind of when we did the blush mm-hmm. episode where people were like, oh, so I don't need to be wearing cool tones. I need to be wearing warm tones and finding your right color. Lips are the same way. If you go with your wrong undertone, it can make your the rest of your skin look almost gray and you can look like a frozen body. Oh. <laughs> So, which I looked at like the whole 80s. The whole I, 80s. I was wearing fuchsia the whole entire 80s. Yeah. People oh. that can wear a fuchsia are people that have a really deep skin tone or like yeah. a really, really olive yeah. based skin I, tone. So, I can wear that kind of stuff. Yeah. You can. Yeah, you can. Mm-hmm. You have a super olivey undertone. Mm-hmm. Like any, almost anybody, like, um, we learned in school, like anybody with like a Mediterranean background mm-hmm. has that really beautiful olive undertone and can wear anything. They can wear blue if they really wanted to. <laughs> um, so the, the darker you are or the more olive you are, the more cool tones you can wear. Um, for the most of us, 
I, I always recommend going to the warmer side. Um, I love a red. If you love to wear red on a day to day, again, let your freak flag fly. <laughs> I think that a red sometimes can make you look too done up on the lips. And if you're not somebody that likes to do a lot on the face or a lot on the eyes, you can look really unbalanced. And so then some people look in the mirror and they're like, why is something off? I think it's my skin or I think it's my eyes and it's probably your lips. So I like to use a lip liner. There are a couple of brands out there that have clear lip liners, clear lip liners that if, again, if you're somebody that your lip line bleeds a lot, you can use a clear lip liner. I know Daniel Cole Collections, which is a makeup artist out of Nashville. She has her own line and you can get it online or you can get at her store there. She's got a clear one. I believe Trish McAvoy has a clear one. And then Jane Aradell also has a clear one. Um, but I think a lot of brands are coming out with them now. So if you just Google it, I'm sure you can find one. They're all pretty much the same. Um, you can put that on first and then you go in with your lip line. I like for more mature people, they tend to be losing their pigment of their lips. Mm -hmm. So I overdraw. I always overdraw on my mom when I do her makeup. And you just, you start the bottom of the lip line at the top of your natural lip line. And so that way, by the top of it, you just overline just enough to where you can even out the balance of your face a little bit. And you can kind of get that more defined lip line that you seem to be losing sometimes when you get older. But is that with a color, a colored yes. lip liner you're talking about? That's with a color, yeah. whichever color that you're either using that day or something that's mm-hmm. semi-ish close to your natural lip color. Yeah. Would give you the most like natural look. Um, but I always love a warm tone. I think everybody needs a rosy pink in their lip collection, a rosy nude and a brown tone nude. Bobby Brown made her fortune off of brown lipsticks. And I think that that works on so many skin tones. And then I love for summer, you can have like more of a corally pink, nothing too bright, nothing, something a little bit more neutral, but a corally pink, I think is really pretty on most skin tones. And then again, you like to let your flag fly, get a red, but get a warm tone orange red. If you get a purple red or a pink or a blue red, that's when you can start looking really pale. Um, and then define that lip line. And I love NYX, NYX are the lip liners that I use in my kit professionally. I think they last a really long time. They sharpen really well. They're, they're really smooth. They're not hard to apply. They don't dry out. Charlotte Tilbury has some great lip liners. I like Mac. Mac has got some great ones. Mac, and they have such an array of colors that you can just go look at it and be like, I think that would look pretty on me. I think that one, they're very true to color on the little swatches that they give you. So those are really easy to look at. Um, And then I love a lip stick. I don't like matte lipsticks. That became a trend and a lot of people are using because they last a long time but they dry your lips out to high heavens. They're not great for anybody that has drier skin. So I like a really creamy lipstick. I'd rather reapply throughout the day than have something that lasts all day that dries me out to where I look crusty. I don't like <laughs> Ditto. <crusty>. Ditto. <laughs> we hate a crusty crushed. Um, and I'm trying to find a man. So I want to make sure that like when I kiss somebody, I don't have to crush the crushed. Um, I don't want them to be like, oh, she's, crispy um <laughs> and lipsticks elf has really good ones milani has really good ones nyx has really good ones first you're looking for a drugstore if you're willing to go high end i think sometimes a lipstick is one of those good things to go high end because they usually have a longer wear time uh, but you don't have to go crazy you don't have to be getting the really really fancy ones but charlotte tilbury has really great ones kat von d which is sold at sephora has really good ones. Bobby Brown, forever and always, has really great lips. That's what she started her company out on. So she's always a good place to go to for lips. Um, and then I love a gloss, but I think some people go too much with a gloss. A gloss that we learned in school, you only put on the center of your lips. You don't put it all over because then you can kind of look a little sticky and a little, and that's what's going to make your lips slide around and kind of smudge and get a little weird. So I love a gloss, but just tapping it in the middle, it makes your lips look bigger. It makes them look juicy. 
and hydrated. Well, and if I put on too much, it ends up on my teeth and I look like my Aunt Lila. God rest her soul. <laughs> but Aunt Lila would look over at me at the, my little precious country Methodist church and smile real big and show <laughs> me her Tic Tacs. <laughs> And asked me if I wanted to tic tac through the air, and she'd always have lipstick on her t- on her teeth, and I go, uh, and then she'd take it off. So yeah, I I put too much on, and then but I do I love li- I love lips, and I love something hydrating. I can't stand for my lips to be dry, and I think a gloss is attractive on people. Mm-hmm. I think it is too. I think a gloss looks good on any age. I think a lot of Older people tend to shy away from glosses sometimes because they're afraid that it makes them either look too youthful or they just, something about that older generation just loves a good, thick yeah. lipstick <laughs> yeah. and to smudge it on <laughs> and, ju- and ju- something about it, they just get real in there. <laughs> or they put a real thick lip line on and then sometimes they forget to fill it in all the way and then yeah. you have that line yeah. and you look shriveled. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. So, you know, you see people with a dark colored lip liner and then much mm-hmm. lighter lipstick yes and we're trying to match the liner to the lipstick color correct amundo uh, correct amundo <laughs> i like to either match it you can go one like one shade up if you really want to make your lips look a lot bit bi- like bigger if that's your goal you can use one shade up but i wouldn't go anything over that because then you do get that really odd contrast if you don't blend it correctly and you, it, it does make people just look What off. about this, though? I was taught at the clinic counter in the early 90s. I was about to say what year. <laughs> um, I was taught that when you, you line your lips and then you fill in your yeah. lips with the liner, yes. and that way it'll help lipstick yeah. stay longer, yeah. and you won't have that, that freaky yeah. ring from the flock of seagulls time. <laughs> yeah, that's what yes. I do. I do the fill in thing. <laughs> yes. I thought that was just like a universal thing. If you're not doing that, <laughs> fill in your lips with the liner. That one makes it last longer. And that also, if you are, if you're just that person and you're like, I'm not carrying a bunch of stuff in my purse, put your lip liner and the gloss and it'll mm-hmm. blend it together. And then you're good. I, I love a lip liner all over the lip. You should definitely be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely be doing that. Yes, indeed. I sometimes just put a lip liner on, blend it with my finger, smudge it, and then put a little bit of a gloss or a chapstick even. And then I call that a, I call that a day. <laughs> call that a day. But I love, if you can just, if you can hone in on practicing, especially with this quarantine time, practicing your brows and getting your shape down, practicing your lips, getting that down. Your eyeliner, defining your eyes. If you can just get a, a little bit of a brow, a little bit of a lash, and a little bit of a lip, you'd be surprised how much even more even your face will look and more together you'll look. If you can find your right colors and get your, because that's the that's the threes of your face is mm-hmm. your brows and your eyes and then your lips. Yeah. Um. Yeah, your brows and then your eyes and your lips make give you the the balance of your face. So if you're overdoing one and not doing enough to the other, then you look very unbalanced. Yes. So that's the goal of makeup is to balance out your face. question well, about i have a quick question yeah. about eye, back to eyebrows we're not going to start all over okay. again but um okay. you you mentioned that you like the um the pencil and mm-hmm. the powders mm-hmm. uh, i've seen and i'm sure all our listeners have seen those eyebrow pencils that actually make like feathers like hairs yeah what are those called has like the has like the three prong yeah and you're like like the and yep. it, okay, those. What's the deal with that? And is that something we even want to what? <laughs> I I would not. Um, I mean, if you want to try it, go for it. <laughs> I can imagine that just being like really inky and yeah. really hard, and almost looking just like smud, like a smudged blob of pigment. Um, I have seen those reviews and like little Instagram videos and things like that of them. I've never noticed anybody liking them. There is a product, and I think that this would be more for somebody who knows how to fill in the brows, mm-hmm. but several brands have come out, I think, 
what was it? I think it was Urban Decay came out with one. And then Glossier has one. And it's a felt tip brow marker. And you can get like that feathered mm. individual hair look. I think that that could be really pretty on a lot of people. I think you have to practice it. You have to know what you're and doing. You have to know what you're doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. That you have to know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, if you've already been filling in your brows. Yeah. You got the skill set. You go. If you got the skills, let it rip, Titter Chip. That's a good one. I think those would be really hard for somebody who hasn't done a lot of makeup, a yeah. lot of brows specifically, because brows, you there's a fine line of defined and over defined. And, and cartoonish. <laughs> And cartoonish. Yes. There's and with there's a lot of trends going, a lot of brow trends going on right now that I think a lot of people are probably seeing their kids or their granddaughters or something, somebody doing, and they're like, why does somebody's brow look so intense? And that's like a big thing right now is doing really intense brows. I don't like that. I like a defined brow, but I don't like the cartoonish like sculpted look. You know, look. Crit, like a drag queen crazy brows or groucho yeah. marks or groucho, yeah. yeah yeah so i think if you can for him, practice but... it worked for yeah. him loved him yeah and again and i'll do in a video i'll show you how to find your brow shape and the ideal brow shape to shape your eye it's just one of those things you have to kind of see it it's hard to explain it um but uh, most people know their brow shape if you're somebody that just doesn't have any kind of brow shape one get them shaped and buy something like a professional and and then figure out your brow shape where it's sparse. Fill it in and go slow. Start up by filling it a little bit. And then you're like, I think I could take more brow. Put in a little <laughs> more brow. Put in an eyelash for all I could. You know, I want you guys to let your makeup wing soar. <laughs> I'm just here to kick kick you in the butt to get you going. That's really what I'm here for. That's perfect. Yeah. Well, um, and I know that um, maybe you guys can do a video or test. You can do a video of, uh, and maybe you already have of applying eyelashes too. Oh yes, like I tips will be for eyelash because I think that's probably a video thing versus a descriptor thing. Am I yes, correct? Yes, definitely. I've got a lot of requests for that, and I'm going to show you guys how I put mine own on, and then I'm going to talk my mom through putting on some too because I know well, some that people should be entertaining. Oh, it should. I hope I don't kill her. <laughs> she puts them on me all the time and she'll say, keep your eyes shut. And I want to open my eye. And I'll see her at an event where I didn't do her makeup and she tried to put a lash on. It's halfway up her eyelid. <laughs> a corner's coming off. So I'm going to show you how to anchor them down. Good. Yes. Good. Well, we can all learn from Tess. That's <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, we are so thankful to have you here and, and finish out our face today. Thank you goodness we're finished with our face we're finally finished with our face and we look yeah, fabulous thank you, though. you're I welcome know. i'm I so happy been, i think people have really learned from it yeah. i think they have people have walked off the streets and been like are you tess and i'm like stop <laughs> it i know i'm madonna i know i know leanne is nothing it's me it's tess is the star of this show Indeed. and they always come up to me and they're like i tried your tips i'm like you get it carol you know, Brenda, my queen. <laughs> We're trying to find a way because Tess is really getting a lot of requests and a lot of comments. You know, they, these videos have been, have, have I don't know, 300,000 views. One of them had 1.7. Mm. So she's getting a lot of requests. We're trying to figure out a way that, because she can't go, you know, to uh, Nebraska tomorrow and come to so go to somebody's house but if she might be we're trying to figure out if she could do zooms with people mm. if people could you know have a consultation with her she could facetime you look through your drawer you know you could show her what you have ask her questions we're trying to figure out a way because people are asking her for that mm -hmm. and you know she can't get everywhere there are people all over the united states yeah. so um, we're trying to figure that out. We will let y'all know. We'll update you on that and see what she can work out because um, I think that would be a good service to people. I think it would be excellent. Excellent and excellent use of your talents. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and and um, as I've said on other podcasts um, in our series, we um, will have all this information in um, a blog on our website, sweatyandpiss.com. You just have to go to the webpage, go to the bottom of the page, 
And I have the other three podcasts, all that information from those three podcasts in the blog already. And I'll do uh, the one from today uh, on the on the blog as well. So you can find brands. I have it where you just click on the name of the product and it'll take you to a website. So it's um, if you, you're wondering where it is. It's all it's all there on sweaty and links. Links. Oh my gosh, links. She's got hyperlinks. I've got mm-hmm. hyperlinks. She's got hyperlinks. I figured out Nobody how to do could it. put me in charge of that. <laughs> Nobody put me in a hyperlink. <laughs> I'll link you to something God knows what. I know. Thank you, Karen, for doing that. <laughs> I'm that she is to do t- it. like she's got time for that, but she is she has done it. And we'll do a video. Yeah. Um, that will coincide with this, and sh- and, and I might break it up. You. I might break it up in two, so I can give you some more tips. It might do like eyebrows and eyes, and then lips. Um, and one, so we can because I know a lot yeah. of people have so many questions about either one. So we might be separated up. We might not. I'll let you know. And we'll put those on the our Facebook page, correct? Right. Yes. And um, also on our Facebook page and on our sweatyandpiss.com website, you can find our link for merchandise. And we yes, have a lot Christmas of fun. Christmas is coming That's up. That's right. <laughs> you know, and it's and it's loungewear. I mean, so if, you know, everybody's going to be lounging, yes. it sounds like. Yeah. Guess what you're getting for Christmas, Tess? Sweaty and pissed. I'm getting my mom's face on my butt on a big on a pair yeah. of leggings. Yeah. I love it. It's nothing I've wanted it's more in my life. It's perfect. It's perfect. And to have Leanne and Karen on my thighs. But there is yeah. great stuff there. I love and, it. And um, we want to thank Green Chef for sponsoring today's episode. Yes. Thank you. So thanks all of you for uh, tuning in, for listening, and f- thank you, Tess Morgan professional makeup artist for sharing all your wealth of knowledge with all of us with mature skin so we can do right by you well thank you for having me i've had a ball (laughs) i've had a ball and a half (laughs) so check out the website and the facebook our facebook page for uh videos and for the information on the products and we will see you next time all right i've had fun thank you bye sweaty and pissed